Log recording. It's 2.09 in the morning, West Coast time. I'm not even live awake yet for this crap. But I'm here, and I'm still live awake, and I don't know how that works. <sighs> still the 19th of December, 2023. I guess last night's dinner, or several hours ago, when I actually did over kill myself with some scrambled egg mixture, and the onions, the spam, and the fried potatoes are still sitting up here. Still giving me hell on this one. I came across stories concerning about Reykjavik. Actually, not Reykjavik, but the um, ice line still pissing me off. This wasn't even in the news cycles all day. I mean, they do it online, and that's about it. CNN actually had a banner headline. Took them, a, took them a long while to get that damn crap going on. And what was I trying to tell them? Ah, uh, let's see. We had a volcano actually happen on Reykjavik, uh, on uh, Iceland. Right by uh, Grindavik. I was leaving a letter to, uh, to an old geology professor of mine back at college giving her a couple of links of what was going on with it. I did tell her that eventually I'm going to have to go back and take another geology course for a pass-no-pass no pass situation. I already got a letter graded it. I already got a C out of the damn thing. So basically I understand a bit of a term, uh, terminology regarding geology. If I'm not mistaken, they've already got tombs of geologic terms that a little bit of this huge tomb was fitting into our books when we were studying geology. How the earth works, plate tectonics, minerals, types of minerals, types of fault lines, types of weathering, bit of seismology, bit of uh, volcanology. And those little tidbits I was looking at and trying to use as I was seeing Iceland having its own geologic conniption fit, shall I say. I mean, almost half a day ago, I'm seeing a lot of, of flare-ups, a lot of lava pumping out. It's easing up more. But it's still active. And there's not much movement in the earth. There's not shifting as much of the lava. So I'm thinking maybe another day or two. I'm an amateur at this damn thing. I'm not a professional. But I can tell you for one thing. This still scares the crap out of me. I'm watching it. It's fascinating as hell. I think I find it a little bit more fascinating watching this instead of the human consequences we're doing to ourselves regarding political shit, and not to mention uh, Middle East uh, crap going on. Let's see. What was it I missed? Uh, North Korea launching another missile right towards uh, Japan. Missing it directly, but just giving everyone else a notification that, yeah, their missiles are working. That wasn't bad enough. Well, how about Africa and its internal politics still going on in several countries? And it's scaring the hell out of people left and right. How about that one? But no, seeing a natural disaster can happening at this point over here where a town got evacuated because of the magma chamber shuff, shuffling and shifting the the fluidity of the of the hot rock going through things. And watching this on YouTube. Internet and YouTube, well, same thing anyway, but still. They have the delay, like a minute or less. So I'm looking at a delayed live film. But it's still... It's horrifying, it's fascinating, morning's coming up, and 
I'm seeing this happen right now. It's not like seeing Mount Etna going off and losing its it, losing its lunch, or even Mexico City in the volcano out there losing its lunch, or even Kilauea oozing. This one is also oozing, but there's not much of a cinder cone being built up, though. It's just oozing. But the lava fissure is going through. Man. It's like a train of fiery rock coming out and oozing all over the place. The island's made basically of basalt. And watching a live seismocam. And not to mention looking at the length of fiery output of this thing. It's like gives me goosebumps. And it's terrifying. Iceland is a volcanic hotspot. Meaning it's, it's one of the weaker spots in between the continental uh, plates. A lot of activity happens on it. I mean, they draw their own economy from bubbling hot springs. It scares the hell out of me because we may be running into the same situation with Yellowstone. And I've heard the stories for past two or three decades on this one. Maybe a little bit longer if I was pay really paying attention to it. That there was one time in the United States there was a super volcano out between what was it, Wyoming, Utah area, Yellowstone National Park. Okay, I am going back into maps, Google Maps. Not doing a Google or shit. So I'm getting in there to see, because what I want to see is something that's going to terrify the hell out of me. And that thing is basically geology at work. Now, I'm scrolling a bit and just waiting for the processing to happen here. Okay. So basically we're talking in the area of Utah and Wyoming and Denver area. You got you got the mountain ranges out in that section there. But you've also got the National Park out there regarding Yellowstone. Actually, it's covering the northwest uh, area, leaving Utah out of it. So we're dealing with Idaho, Wyoming, and certain sections of that area are supposed to have been an uh, incomplete cauldron. At one time, there was a lot of hot spot activity in the area. And in Yellowstone, there are sections in there that deal with geysers and hot springs. They kept talking about faithful, old faithful being a reliable geyser because every there's a duration on this one where hot water spews up and everyone has, likes to take a picture because it's so breathtaking. And other people in the geology world are wondering whether or not we actually got enough activity happening out there in the first place. Because for us, dealing with geysers for a lot longer than I can remember, it's starting to scare these scientists left and right. They have seismic monitors all around the park, outside the area as well, trying to find out whether or not there's going to be any microquakes happening at that point over here, like two or threes. Uh, shifting from one uh, magnitude one to maybe a three. If we're trying to get about three or four, then we know we've got a problem. They detected that kind of situation back in the 80s, but did it, their equipment wasn't sophisticated enough. 
We didn't have the sufficient technology to really predict Mount St. Helens when she blew. And that was between Oregon and Washington. We had the delayed reaction on the news. We had delayed reaction on it. I mean, we got the AP reports and we had news uh, coverage, but it was spotty. It was very spotty. And for those who actually survived the damn uh, eruption, who actually got the information out, they actually showed pictures, still pictures, of the side of the mountain of uh, Mount St. Helens blowing off. And it did have geologic readings happening. In fact, the USGS made warnings to the entire area to watch out what the hell was going on. Otherwise, boom. And that was scary. Cascades, yeah, they're still worried about it because there are still a few mountains out there that actually used to be, uh, used to have volcanic activity uh, thousands or almost a million years ago. I mean, a long time. So they're still monitoring the area as well. There had been activity, volcanic activity at one time back in the early 1900s. And that scared the hell out of people. So imagine the entire region, northwest region of the United States being under that much scrutiny. We already know that there's a lot of scrutiny in Alaska. There's a hell of a lot of scrutiny on that one. And there's multiple volcanoes out in that area that keep blowing off. Keep blowing off steam, not to mention causing earthquakes left and right. It's a very highly active volcanic area. We have spreading centers and we have convection areas or convergent areas where fault lines go underneath each other. And we also have spreading centers which new material is coming out. There are multiple volcanoes out in Alaska, up in the main state and also along in the uh, Aleutian Island areas. And every time one of those damn things go off, there's always been a tsunami warning happening automatically. When the volcanism happens, when the eruptions take place underwater, the vibrations in the ocean currents spread out like crazy, pushing the water on the surface and may look rough but not extremely rough. And as I was trying to remember what the geology courses were trying to tell me, and not to mention oceanography class a long time ago, that you'll never see a tsunami coming until you actually see the waves draw back from the surface, build up, and then whoop out. It's not like the uh, Hollywood versions, but you know, I've seen it also. Uh, the cameras that they've shown, the videos that they've shown, um, how the force of water can destroy places left and right and flood them out. I've done it before in Alaska a lot of times. Japan's, Australia, some of the islands. We have what they call the uh, Tsunami Center out in Hawaii constantly monitors this. So every time there has been activity happening along the Pacific Rim of Fire in the Pacific region, I mean, this huge swath of it, well, we have our continental fault lines, plates, just going underneath or spreading out and pushing against, pushing up. They all cause a lot of vibrational activity. It's a lot of vibration. And that causes a lot of trouble everywhere. So Hawaii is usually trying to keep track of all this stuff. And they also keep up with all the earthquake reports happening around the world. When the volcanism was happening out in Iceland, the one thing I didn't hear was if there was any 
any alerts being pumped out. Now granted, the energy of that magma displacement, or actually the magma upheaval that we're getting right now, up in the uh, Grindavik area of, of Iceland, there have been in other lava tubes that had been used, cooled, and now being reused again, and now the weakened state of the surface allowed a lot of places for the lava to go. Yeah, I know I sound excited about this stuff because reading about it is one thing, watching it happen, it's totally scary as hell. Because now I'm seeing things that I didn't see this way in my lifetime. And yeah, it's terrifying. And the thing of it is, regarding this happening right now, it's absolutely the scariest son of a bitch you'd ever seen. I thought I hit an earthquake like crazy until you actually see lava spewing out. And then you keep wondering at the movie that you actually seen a long time ago called Volcano, which had Tommy Jones in it, and I think Don Cheadle in it, would scare the crap out of people. And this did. They've got alerts already loaded up in the Google Maps about this damn thing. And if I'm looking at the satellite picture itself, not the terrain I was taking about uh, last year or year before. I'm seeing the cracks in the ground during those days of where the lava tubes were because I'm seeing the past eruptions. And it's along this area that the uh, fissures are opening up again in that area. But what they're worrying about is the lava flow moving southwards in those tubes towards Grinovic. And they had to evacuate that place. And you want to hear the the thing that pissed off a lot of people in, in, uh, in Iceland on this one, Blue Lagoon was this tourist area, this tourist trap full of geysers and hot springs. One of their main traps out there for tourism to get bucks from everybody else. They had opened it up one day trying to get, salvage their business, and then nature said, uh-uh, I'm shutting you down. By having the eruptions in the fissure areas, about a few miles away, which is pumping in a lot of noxious and poisonous gas. Sulfur, carbon dioxide, and a few other gases out there mixed in with, with pieces of rock don't set too well on lungs. The problem is when you get that stuff inhaled, you're going to have permanent lung damage. You can't get that crap out of your lungs once it solidifies in there because now it feels like you're going to be dealing with cement in your lungs. And it is. You're breathing in cement. I don't care how, how well of your filter you got right now. It's still the same damn way. So right now, the Blue Lagoon, which is this tourist trap, had all been shut down because of the lava flows happening out there. Which is the reason why I'm looking at the uh, the live shot this morning. It's muted, but it's still active and it's still bubbly. It scares the hell out of me because we could be dealing with the same situation out here. We could be dealing with the same situation out here in the United States. Not so much as the west, as the east coast, but the west coast, because we have, we had past experiences with lava and volcanism. What I mean by volcanism, anything dealing with volcano, uh, volcanoes, activity, shaking, spewing out, building up cones. It's fascinating to watch on the screen, but in real life, I'd rather be the hell away from it. So anyway, a couple of those links I put in my last video, well, it covers one of the screens I'm watching right now because it's got a fourth screen on this one. One of them happens to deal with geologic activity, shaking monitors. If there was any shaking happening in, in Iceland, it reveals it. Mostly, it's focusing on the hot spot right now. Ain't that lovely?